So the 90 second rule states that the kind of life cycle of an emotion or an emotional reaction is only 90 seconds if we do not re-engage or re-stimulate that emotion. So this is a little rule and protocol that can help you to be much happier and ultimately I think more effective as you go through daily life. So now when I first heard about this rule, I was a little bit skeptical because I didn't find immediately like a study or series of studies and research specifically on this rule. But as I looked into it, the person who kind of originated or talks a lot about it is a woman named Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor. She's a Harvard trained neuroscientist who has an extensive background in neuroanatomy and research. And so I think that this is really well grounded in the scientific literature. Now here's what it states. I'll read a quote from her. When a person has a reaction to something in their environment, there's a 90 second chemical process that happens. Any remaining emotional response is just the person choosing to stay in the emotional loop. So in other words, right, when something causes an emotional reaction, that's when we get kind of upset or tense or stressed, we can feel that building up, right? There's a kind of a cascade of chemicals starting in the brain and nervous system, but then flowing into the bloodstream. In fact, when you're in one of these states, often a, you may see the release of a chemical neuroepinephrine, which is related to like kind of adrenaline or anger, or it could be cortisol, which is a stress hormone. But it essentially says that once this ca chemical cascade starts, if we don't restart it or re-stimulate it or re-engage it to keep that loop going, within about 90 seconds, it's passed through the body and it's flushed out. So here's a protocol that you can try uh, that I think would be quite useful that she, she explains a little bit. Is essentially when you feel kind of a reaction happen or something is to just shift your attention to observing it and observing the second hand on a clock, on a watch. Of course, I'm wearing a digital watch, so it would be the little second number up there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, pulling up a stopwatch, whatever. It could even be counting. But she says, as you do that, what's happening is you're starting to disengage or de-identify with the emotional reaction. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, it's kind of like this. Uh, if you are feeling that emotional reaction, you say like, I am angry or I'm upset or I am, and there's no real separation. You're just in the emotion. You're identifying with it. And because you're sort of just in it and immersed in it, it's running the show, not you, right? You are serving the emotion rather than the emotion, emotion serving you. So when you actually step back and just observe yourself and then start looking at the seconds, you're disengaging, right? You're creating a little bit of separation between emotional reaction and your just seat of awareness. And so you're just observing it rather than participating in it. And then you watch the seconds go by and you'll feel a fairly noticeable difference in your physiology. So there is a simple protocol that you can begin to try in your daily life that I think, again, will help you to be happier, but also just more effective is when you feel kind of a negative emotion coming on or upset or you're getting stressed or you're pissed is to just stop and either set a timer or look at your watch, or look at a stopwatch, watch those 90 seconds or so dissipate. And what's going on behind the scenes is again, trying your best not to re-stimulate it or bring your awareness or attention or thoughts back to the thing that's upsetting you. If you can avoid doing that, after about 90 seconds in the background, these chemicals are passing through your blood and your nervous system, and that entire emotional reaction will dissipate in about 90 seconds. So I encourage you to try that rule. Um, here's a video as well from my channel that YouTube suggests you'll like. As always on this channel, you can find science-based tools as well as insights from the arts, philosophies, religious traditions, etc., all to help you live a happier life. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.